Hi guys, today I'm gonna to be showing you how I deep cleaned my really gross, dirty oven with Easy Off Fume-Free Oven Cleaner. And I'm gonna show you my tips and tricks for doing it the fastest and easiest way possible when it's as dirty as mine is here. I started by removing the racks from my oven. I'm just gonna set those aside and clean them outside later. I'll show you that near the end. After removing the racks, I wiped out all of the loose dirt in the bottom and then grabbed my can of Easy Off fume-free oven cleaner. Now it's important to use the fume-free version or it does have really strong fumes that will stink up your house. And since I live in Texas, it's summertime here. It's about 100 degrees outside every day. So there was no chance I was going to be able to keep my windows open to let that air out. So fume-free is the way you want to go if you don't want to have to open your windows. And I want to point out here that I did not spray that into my convection oven fan. I sprayed it onto a paper towel and then wiped the front of that fan off. I don't want to get that spray inside the fan because I don't want to have to take that fan apart to wipe the spray away. And according to Easy Off, you also want to avoid spraying directly onto a pilot light. Don't spray it onto the electrical connections. Don't spray it onto the switches or the heating elements. So my heating elements are in the upper part of this oven. I did not clean the upper part of this oven with that easy off. You also want to avoid spraying onto the thermostats if your oven has a thermostat too. So as you can see right here, I'm putting some plastic wrap down on top of the easy off that I sprayed onto the bottom of the oven. Since my oven is so dirty, I wanted to keep that easy off wet as long as possible. And plastic wrap is a little trick I've been using with um, paint stripper on furniture that just keeps that product wet longer so that it can penetrate deeper. I also used the plastic wrap on the door so that I could close that door instead of leaving it open. So the plastic wrap helped to hold that in place while the door was closed so that it wasn't just sliding down that door the whole time. And that way I could close the door and not worry about the cat or the kids touching that door while it was open. After I closed up this oven, I was sure to put a do not use sign really big on the oven door just to be safe and make sure that no one in the house would turn that oven on. That easy off can be flammable if it's exposed to a high enough heat. So you cannot turn that oven on with the easy off. So that also means that you cannot use easy off along with the self cleaning feature on your oven. So after two hours, I opened that oven up. I wanna say that there's barely any smell in my house at this point. There was barely any smell in my house at all. So it was not a strong smell. I never felt like I was getting a headache or overpowered by it. You can always wear a mask if something like that typically bothers you. And you can also wear gloves even though they're not required. Always go with whatever makes you feel comfortable when it comes to safety like that. I will say though that I did not wear gloves this whole time and my skin always felt fine. It never looked red, it never dried out. I just washed my hands every time I stopped using it. Okay, let's talk about how quickly that gunk is coming off of that glass there. The key to that is that razor blade in my hand, guys. So that is a paint scraper with a razor blade on the end of it. There is no way that just with a paper towel or a scrubber that I could have gotten all of that really hard baked on gunk off without that razor blade. So you have to be careful using a razor blade. It has to be held at an angle. If you're worried about scratching the finish on your glass or the inside of your oven, they actually make this really cool plastic razor blade that is supposed to be safe from scratching anything, but works as just like a razor at scraping everything off. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. I'm going over a lot of the tips and tricks that are on the can of Easy Off Fume Free itself. But be sure to always read the directions yourself so that you're not missing anything that I forget to point out or that somebody else in a YouTube video forgets to point out to you. So after using that razor blade to remove all of the harder dots of baked on oil that were all over the surface of that glass door, I moved on to using the scour or the scrub daddy scouring pad. So that scouring pad has sort of a rough plastic mesh around it, which is really great at lifting up all of the grease and getting into all of the little nooks and crannies, all of the corners and crevices on that oven door. And since it's a soft sort of sponge on the inside, it can soak up a lot of that grease. You do have to keep rinsing it out with hot water as you go so that you have a clean pad that can absorb more of that grease. So as you can see, my oven is super dirty. It has been like four years since I cleaned it the last time. I know I'm horrible. I just forget to do these things because 
I never see the inside of my oven until I've already preheated it and then it's too late. I can't clean it at that point. As you can see, using that razor blade to scrape off most of the gunk and then moving on to the Scrub Daddy scouring pad and wiping away stuff with a paper towel has done wonders on that door. Let's move to the inside of the oven now. So again, I wanna point out that that Easy Off oven cleaner did not smell bad. It had sort of a light citrusy smell. It didn't ever smell really strong or overwhelming. I didn't feel like I needed to get my head away from that oven. Just be sure, of course, when you're spraying the cleaner onto the oven, you don't let it get into your face. You cannot inhale that cleaner. It is dangerous to inhale it. So again, wear a mask if it makes you feel more comfortable while you spray it. And on the inside of the oven, I went with the same steps that I used on that oven glass door. I used that razor scraper. I was trying to be as careful as possible to hold it flat and steady against the bottom of that oven. As you can see, the bottom of my oven had a lot of super thick layers of that baked on grease. So after four years, that stuff can build up and keep getting thicker and thicker. It makes it a lot harder to scrape off. I had a lot harder time with the bottom of this oven because I waited so long in between cleanings. So I highly recommend, and I'm going to try definitely to keep up with cleaning it. Every time I do the dishes now or something, just wipe down the inside of my oven. Trying to prioritize remembering to clean the oven instead of just cleaning all of the stuff that I can actually see on the outside of the oven. Another tip here is um, that you cannot mix Easy Off Oven Cleaner or almost any other cleaner out there with other cleaners. So sometimes you can accidentally cause a strong chemical reaction that will produce fumes that can knock you out, burn your eyes, burn your skin. So as always, do not mix any other cleaners with this cleaner as you're using it. When I wiped away a lot of the gunk on the bottom of this oven, instead of thinking of using something else to see if it would help, I would just spray on a little bit more. So if I was scraping off the top layer, I would spray on a little bit more Easy Off Oven Cleaner because I'm just assuming that the Easy Off couldn't penetrate to that lower la layer and I don't wanna mix in any other chemicals as I'm going along here. At this point, I did grab the original Scrub Daddy pad to see how it would hold up against the bottom of that oven, but the scouring pad was definitely way better to use with that tough grease. So scouring pad is the way to go or another mesh covered sponge that is good at scraping things as it works. One of those Scotch-Brite green scouring pads probably would have done a great job scrubbing away all of that grease too. And they're easy to rinse out with hot water as you work so that you can keep them working at their best longer. Let's fast forward this a bit now so you can see what the oven looked like after I did this for about 20 minutes. As you can see, it's already so much better. I did respray that little area right there because the light bulb that is in the back of that oven was actually hot enough that it was drying out the easy off so once that easy off dries out it's really hard to remove it you want it to be wet so that it activates all of the greases and the cleaner that's on there and you can easily wipe it away once it dries it kind of hardens so just spray on a little bit more to reactivate it and then you can wipe it away okay i'll show you in a minute how great that oven looks when i'm done but first let's move on to the easy way that i clean oven racks I love to clean oven racks outside on top of a garbage bag. So I do it outside because I feel like when I clean them in my sink or in a bathtub or in a big heavy duty tub, I just get the inside of that sink or the bathtub covered in grease and then I have another job to do. I have to do another cleaning project once I'm done. So if I put that outside on top of a heavy duty garbage bag or a big piece of plastic drop cloth, whatever you've got on hand, I spray the cleaner, the Easy Off oven cleaner, onto those oven racks and let it sit for about 20 minutes. So the oven racks weren't nearly as dirty as the inside of my oven was. So after 20 minutes, I was able to use that Scrub Daddy scouring pad to lightly scrub off all of the grease that was baked on to those oven racks. Again, read the directions on the container of the Easy Off. I think there are certain types of oven racks that you can't use the Easy Off on certain type of the uh, shiny aluminum metal or something about that that you have to be careful with. So read the directions before you do it. But my oven racks were just fine with the Easy Off. Check out how dirty that scouring pad is after I cleaned my oven racks. And another thing about I love about cleaning these outside is that I get to use my hose to spray everything off, 
which is a lot less work than doing it inside again. So yay for outside cleanup. After rinsing off my oven racks, I just dried them off with a cleaning towel that I had and they were ready to go back in the oven, easy peasy. Now let's get back to the inside of my oven. Okay guys, all I did was use that scouring pad and wipe away as I went with paper towels and look how amazing the inside of this oven and that oven glass door looks. So much better than it did originally. Here's a reminder of what that oven looked like when I started. So it took me about an hour total to clean this oven. Not a big deal. There wasn't a ton of heavy scrubbing. I felt like it was pretty easy considering how dirty it was. And again, look at how great this looks. Just wiping away stuff as I went. The bottom of my oven was a little bit messed up from a fire that a certain husband in this house might have started one Thanksgiving day. So I gave up on getting rid of it completely. But overall, I am so happy with the way this oven turned out. And it's been about a week since I've done this. And I want to report back to you guys. I am cleaning it every day now. That's it for cleaning this oven, guys. Check out my other cleaning videos. I'll put a link to them in the description below. If you love how amazing the transformation was on this oven, you'll also love the amazing transformation I did on my car. It was really dirty to begin with too, and it turned out fantastic. Okay, bye guys.